Hey everyone, I'm Robbie Cuthbert and I'm sitting here right now with one of my contour coffee tables. Um, I've gotten some requests recently to give a little demonstration and explanation of how I design and make some of my tension-based sculptures and furniture. Um, and I'm actually going to be building one of these tables today, so I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to do just that. Before assembling the table, let's talk about cabling patterns. So there are lots of different ways you can arrange cables in order to create something stable. And you can see a lot of the different patterns I've used uh, in some of these pictures right here. But it would take too long to go over all the different cabling patterns I've ever used. So uh, today I'm just going to focus on my favorite one. And it's what I call the opposing curves cabling method. So this is the method that you can see now here in these sculptures. And it's also the one that I use um, when I construct the contour coffee table. Uh, the table just repeats the cabling pattern in each of its four corners. So the easiest way to explain this method of cabling is probably through pictures. So let's take a look at a little animation. So we'll start off with two curves and line them up in such a way so that they're not touching but they're sort of interlocked. And then we'll take four cables and string them between the ends of both the curves. Now, if we tighten those cables, what's going to happen? Uh, so you can see here that basically the curves want to move apart. The cables, if you tighten them, want to minimize the distance between the endpoints of all the curves. And so when we tighten them, the curves move away from each other. Now, if we bring the curves back together and we get rid of the outer cables and replace them with four cables close to the apex of each curve, we have a totally different situation. Now, if we try to tighten those cables, the curves actually want to move together. Um, tightening the cables is effectively the same thing as shortening them. And in this case, shortening the cables makes these two curves want to move toward each other. So what happens then if we add back the outer cables and tighten up both the outer and inner cables? Well, now we're left with a system that doesn't really have anywhere to go. If we try to push the two curves together, we're going to be counteracted by the outer cables because we tighten those and they want to pull the curves apart. If we try to pull the curves away from each other, we're going to be counteracted by the inner cables because we tighten those too and they're trying to pull the curves together. So the end result is that we have these two curves and there's just nowhere for them to go. They have to stay exactly where they are. And that's what makes the contour coffee table so stable. Even though none of the legs touch each other, it's capable of supporting hundreds of pounds of weight. So with the conceptual stuff out of the way, let's go on to actually building the table. Uh, so what I have on the table here are a pair of needle nose pliers, some cable cutters, a crimping tool, some copper crimps, a 16th inch stainless steel braided cable. Uh, the table itself is a jig that's going to hold everything in place while I assemble it. And of course I have these bamboo legs that are the key component to the contour coffee table. I use a CNC machine to cut the legs out and then I use a drill press to drill all the holes by hand uh, before sanding everything and finishing them off with a thin coat of polyurethane. So the first step in making this table is probably the most boring one. We have to start by cutting all the cable. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I have pre-measured uh, lengths of cable that I just pull everything to and snip it off. Um, once you have everything measured once, no need to measure again. So I just save a one set of cables that are to the right length and I just use those as guides to cut everything out. Um, and so once I have all the cables of a certain length cut, I will take them two at a time and crimp their ends together so that they're ready to be inserted into the table once all the other cables are cut. After the cables are all set, it's time to insert the legs into the jig. So uh, jig setups differ from sculptures to different types of furniture, but in this case, the jig is just made up of a sheet of MDF with small pieces of wood screwed onto it where uh, the foot of each leg is going to touch down. So I just insert the foot of the leg in between the pieces of wood and then clamp down 
on the pieces of wood to secure the leg in place. Um, I also add little spacers right here to make sure that the leg stays at the proper height so that everything will be properly aligned once I add all the cables. So once the legs are all secured in place, it's time to start adding the cables. And since the design is built on the idea of using opposing forces created by the cables to hold all these curves in stable relation to each other, it's important to add, alternate adding inner and then outer cables. Since the inner cables want to pull the curves together and the outer cables want to pull them apart, alternating between adding the two helps keep the forces evenly distributed throughout the construction process. So you may have noticed when I was putting all the cables in that I didn't actually tighten any of them. I like to just get everything in place first before moving ahead, but now it's time for the tightening process. So the way we do that is we take one of our copper crimps, slide it onto the cables, and then take our crimping tool in one hand and the needle nose pliers in the other. Now this part of the process takes a little bit of practice. You have to get the right feel for how much tension to put on the wires. It's all done by hand, all by feel. So I'm gonna start by pulling the cable through and then pulling it up so that it's tight. I start with the outer cables, not the inner one, because when I tie the outer cables, it pulls the leg down onto this secure support. If I started with the inner ones, it would pull it up and get everything out of alignment. Once I have the first outer cables tightened in place, then I can go ahead and do the inner ones and then alternate outer, inner, outer, inner, and everything will stay put. But I like to start with the outer first because that'll make sure everything's cinched down and in place and not popping up off of this support. So once we have these cables all tight, you can take the crimper, put it around the copper crimp, And then with a little twisting action from the needle nose pliers, secure, or pull those cables tight and then secure it by squeezing the crimp with the other hand. Once all the outer cables are in place, it's time to do the inner ones. So it's just the same exact process. Uh, this time though, when I pull on the inner cables, the uh, leg is going to lift up a little bit from this spacer here. So I have to keep a careful eye on that and make sure that it only comes off of the spacer maybe about a 30 second of an inch. I'm gonna take my needle nose pliers. Pull up. Get down, make sure that the leg isn't lifting too much off of that support. Here I can see it, about a 30 second of an inch, that's good. So I'm gonna cinch down with the crimpers. Give it a good, good crimp, and then do the rest of the, of the crimping. Um, securing those first rounds of inner and outer cables uh, is really the most important part of the entire process. That's what really locks the legs into place. And if you do a good job with aligning everything with those first round of cables, then the rest of it should be pretty easy. So from there, it's just a matter of alternating inner, outer, inner, outer cables to keep everything well balanced. Um, this is definitely the part of the process that requires the most finesse and skill. All the cable tensioning is done completely by feel, so it definitely requires a lot of practice to get the hang of. Now here I am tightening the very last of the 104 crimps that go into making one of these tables and once I'm done with that I can take the table off the jig. So the first step in removing the table from the jig is to get rid of these four vertical supports. So just slide them right out. They're not doing anything anymore. And then we'll remove the clamps that are holding the legs into the jig. Final step is just to very gently wiggle the jig out of the, or wiggle the table out of the jig so that it doesn't get scraped or anything by the wooden slots it's held in. And 
there we go. We can flip it upside down. So the crimps are on the other side and it is good to go. Uh, my final step will just be grinding down the ends of each crimp because they can be a little sharp, especially where the cables would cut from them. Um, and after that, there's only one more thing to do. So once all the cables are tightened and all the sharp ends have been ground down, the table's good to go. So I have the base right in front of me and all that's left to do now is to add the glass. Um, this sheet of glass is pretty heavy. It weighs in at about 60 pounds. Um, but you'll notice as I put it down here that the base doesn't really give at all. Um, that's because you have all these cables just working together to create something really stable. Um, so now with the glass on top, the table is completely done. Uh, I hope you learned a little bit from watching this about my process and how I build and design tension-based sculptures and furniture. Thanks for watching. Thank you.